See that cat? How's it going guys? So in today's Splinter tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this animation right here. It's a really cool logo reveal. So it's in just about six steps. So first we're gonna just model our kind of primitive particle objects. Then we're gonna create the node tree that we're gonna attach those to, and then we're gonna animate that. So that's kind of the brunt of the work. Next, we're gonna add some materials to really make the logo and the whole thing just look like it's a whole wooden contraption. Then we're gonna add some simple two-point lighting, and then we're gonna add a little bit of color grading in the compositor, which is something that I don't normally do, so it's really cool and really fun. So there's a lot of really cool things in this tutorial for you motion designers. And with that being said, we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. Real Time Materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. And we're back. So this is the project file that we're gonna be done with whenever we get this. All of you guys on Patreon, you have access to this project file now, if you don't know about that. Bunch of really cool things on the Patreon, kind of my hub for MoGraph tips and tricks and all that fun stuff. Uh, but we are gonna go ahead and get in a new file and start from scratch. All right, so let's first get those primitives. So first we're gonna get a UV sphere, and then I'm gonna go up here, hit the little ghost icon. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key for me to go to front, and then I'm gonna hit edit, and then I'll start tab for edit mode here. And then I'm just gonna go right up here, face select and don't, bun my, don't mind my cat, she's uh, having zoomies. And then we're gonna go and just select that, hit X and click faces. I'm gonna go out of ghost mode and then I'm hit A, right click subdivide and then bring that smoothness up and then I'm gonna hit F, do all that. I'm gonna shade smooth. Here we go, we have this. And then what we're gonna do is just go ahead and get in a uh, cylinder, bring these vertices to 64 and then bring that, uh, actually keep the radius the same, bring the depth in so we have a nice little disc and we are done modeling our primitives. Now let's go ahead and create that whole ge uh, geometry node scene. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and get a plane, and then we're gonna go here to uh, geometry nodes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this window, hit new, delete the input, Shift A, search. We're gonna get a grid. And we're gonna plug this grid right into the geometry socket. And then uh, we're gonna bring our size, click and drag, we're gonna bring that to 10. And then we're gonna also bring our vertices to six. So now if we go to the wireframe view, you can see we have some nice vertices here so we can place all of our stuff on here. So we're gonna go ahead and get an instance on points. Let's go ahead and get this instance on points here. And my cat is still going crazy. Uh, right here in the cylinder, I'm just gonna rename it so it doesn't get confused in the mess of everything. So I'm gonna call it flat in the sphere. I'm just gonna call it bulb, really you can call it whatever you want. And this one, I'm just gonna call it geo because that's where the geometry node setup is gonna be sitting. So now I can easily go up here and go, okay, we're bringing the flat one. And then we're gonna plug geometry into instance. I'm gonna click and drag on the scale and bring it down a little bit. So now we have this. And uh, now we can go ahead and create the animation or make it work. So what we need to do is animate the rotation, but also figure out how to uh, randomize it. I wanna be able to individually see these. So what I'm gonna do is get a combine X, Y, Z. I didn't really explain that well. Basically what this allows is if we don't have this, say I just want to plug in the random value node into just the X, the Y, or the Z. Well, you can't do that. You can only plug it in the rotation, which affects all of them at once. Well, this allows that. You plug this in here, now it reveals your ability to play with them individually. So now we're gonna get in a random value node. And it uh, looks like, yeah, so we're gonna do it on the Y. And so the max right here, it's really fun. So we're gonna bring that max really to whatever your heart desires. I want to animate this direction. So maybe around the 20s, that'll be good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get a mix node. I don't know why my cat is going insane. I'm not sure if y'all can hear that. I guess it doesn't matter. So plug the mix right here. If you're not sure what's going on here, if I bring the factor all the way to the right, this B right here where it says B, it is acting 
as the Y slider. So if we plug into the Y, see this B because there's nothing plugged into it. So it's just acting as the Y slider if the factor is brought all the way over here. If we bring it all the way over here, this B isn't being effective at all. So bring it all the way to the left, it's showing all of this. Bring it all the way to the right, it is translating, bring this back to zero, translating into just flat. And that's how we animate it. We go from right to left. And so it's transferring from this, from A to B. It's going from A, which is the random, all the way to B, which is the flat. Hopefully that simplified it for you. So now we can just go and simply animate this really quickly. So if I go bring it up, go and get a timeline, and then uh, what I'm gonna do is give myself 120 frames, and we're gonna animate to uh, frame 100. So right up here in the factor, hit I, go all the way to frame 100, and just bring it over I. And now if we look at it, Now we have that. And what we can do now is I can hit Shift D right here and see this node tree, there's number two. That means we have uh, two uh, objects with this one node tree. So I'm gonna click uh, number two to create a duplicate right here on this object info. We're gonna go ahead and click the bulb and then I'm gonna bring him down so he's not intersecting. Something like this. Very cool, all right. Now we need to create our Boolean, um, the plane here in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is hit Shift A and get a plane and just scale it up to something like this. And then now what we can do is click on here and it's not, th this object right here, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna work as a Boolean object until, uh, and I'm just gonna turn on that cavity and outline. It's not gonna work until we do a realize instance node. So realize instances, Plug that here. Here on this plane, I'm gonna hit right, I'm gonna hit tab, right click, subdivide. And I'm gonna subdivide it 10 times just to give it some nice geometry to Boolean. Even though you may not even need that, but it could work, doesn't matter. Um, let's go here, click on this plane. I'm gonna hit control A and apply scale, add modifier, Boolean. And then I'm just gonna use the eyedropper tool and select geo and then use fast. And then right over here, I'm gonna hit uh, control A and apply that. So now if I were to hit H, H, we now have our Booleans, which we can now just go ahead and throw in a solidify. Click on this guy and we're gonna go ahead and put a solidify on it, if I can find it. Boom. Solidify, something like this. And then we need to get in a bevel node. So bevel it and then bring up the segments, right click, shade smooth. Now we have this. Now that we're beveling, we might as well just bevel everything. So here in the outliner, click on the flat one, add in a bevel node, just play with your amount till you like it, right click, shade smooth, and then here on the bulb, we're also going to bevel it, so add in a, click on bulb in the outliner, bevel that, and then bring up those segments, again, till you like it. All right, cool. And then here, see all those fragments, that weirdness? The way to fix that easily, you can, be a little bit more nerdy and fix all of it. But we just bring that shape on the uh, profile to flat and that's gonna fix it and still keep everything beveled. Here in this object, let's go back to geometry nodes and continue working. So I'm gonna go ahead and bypass the realize instances. We don't need that. I'm gonna click and drag and make this a little smaller. Click this guy and also make them a little smaller so we can appreciate the gaps. Now if I press play, you can now see that we have a really nice looking animation and it's all set up and it's animated. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the materials. So I'm gonna click on here, hit set material, click on here and um, let's go ahead, click new and call this logo. And then I'm gonna click here and add that logo and just add it here as well, just so we could see it. All right, so I used Photoshop. You can use whatever you'd like um, and pull in whatever logo you want. Now this is gonna be an image. Um, so use your logo as an image. You can even uh, start up a brand new Blender, uh, Blender scene, just type out some text, make it like emissive white, black background, render that out. We just need a black and white image to project onto our scene. That's all you need. So you, you can even use a photo, like a, a meme. Anything, it's just gotta be a photo. Black and white is better, but if you're trying to use the color of the photo, that's a whole different story. Uh, but you need a square black and white photo. This one is 3840 by 3840, uh, just to make it nice and high quality. 
So what we're gonna do now is head over to the shading tab and we're gonna get this going. So I'm gonna collapse these two guys here. And what I wanna do is get an empty, shift A and get in an empty. Uh, that's gonna control the material. So first off, with that Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I'm gonna hit Control T. I'm gonna open that logo. So here's the logo here. And then um, right here, we're gonna go from repeat to clip and we're gonna use the object coordinate. So now it's going to do that. So what we need to do now is here in the object selector of the texture coordinate, go ahead and pick that empty. So this empty now, if I hit S, I'm gonna click on that line, hit S, make it fill up to here. I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top. You can see how he's kind of tiled. So it'll make it easy to position this. If I hit G, bring it over just to this corner and then hit S to scale it up. And then just make sure it's kind of uh, even in all the positions that it's at. There we go. This is, this is the deal. And you can even scale it up a little bit more. And then of course we wanna make sure it's centered so you can hit G and just kind of see how it's hitting all of those spheres to kind of make eyeball the centering of it. And there we go. Now we have this. All right, so go over here to ambientcg.com and go ahead and search wood number 017. This is the wood that I'm using. Reason being, it's very simple. It's not very distinctive in terms of like all the special details on it. And that's gonna be important because of the instances and geometry nodes, it repeats things. And for this to work, we kind of have to deal with that. So this one is kind of generic and not like super detailed enough to where we can work with it. So go ahead and download the 4K PNG. So go ahead and unwrap that. And then let's go ahead and get in uh, our material. So I'm gonna hit control and right click. We're gonna use this as a mask to cut between two different principled. So I'm gonna hit shift D on this and we're gonna get in a mix, a mix shader, plug this here and I'm gonna make this top one pure red in the RGB. And then we're just gonna plug this right into here as the mask. And so now it's masking from the white to the black. Um, so this white one is going to be our wood material. So what we can do, I'm going to just bring this guy over here, is I'm going to hit Control T, hit Open, and I'm going to navigate to wood number 17 and click on Color. And then I'm going to use the object coordinate in this case. I know it's not conventional, but geometry nodes, geometry nodes throws wrenches in systems, and we have to deal with those systems. So I'm going to hit click and drag and bring my scale nice and high. So this looks like a small piece of wood. So there we go, that looks great. If I press play, we're just gonna make sure, yep, everything is projected and working the way we want, so we like that. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just hit G and move this over. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get a color ramp, plug the wood into that, and then in this case, again, we're gonna make this pure red plug this here. And so now I'm gonna bring this in, bring this in. So now the YouTube logo is also wooden, uh, kinda. So it's not paint, it's like painted wood or whatever. So now what we can do is I'm gonna hit Control Shift D so everything stays connected. I'm gonna click on that number two and navigate to the roughness. And then we're gonna go from sRGB to non-color, plug that into the roughness of both, didn't mean to do metallic, roughness of both principled nodes, and then we just need our bump. So we'll bring shift A, get a bump node, plug normal to normal, uh, control shift D, click that number two, and we're gonna go ahead and grab the normal. Distance to point one, and bring your strength down a little bit, plug that into the height, and then plug this bump node, plug this bump node also into the other principle. So now, everything is finished and textured and uh, looks really nice. Now we can move on to the last object. In fact, I'm just gonna go over here and hit the period key to center on him because he needs a new material. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the logo material on it, click the number four, and then just go ahead and delete everything else, including the mask, so that we have everything here. So now you can see we have the wood material. It's stretching out weird, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like this, um, but you know, I like to run and gun. So you can go ahead and play with the scale to kind of bring it back in a little bit. Now it's stretched here, but that's not gonna be very noticeable, especially when it's spinning. Um, it works a little bit better. I'm gonna actually bring this back to default scale really quick, 
and then play with your scale. Let's see which one, here we go. The scale here to get something a little more distinctive. There we go, now we have it. Uh, it looks crappy in Eevee, but this material looks great in Cycles. Uh, but now, but now we have all of these guys under here, and these guys shaded here, and we can move on to lighting and be done. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key and go to the top, shift A and get a camera. I'm gonna type in uh, 960 by 1080, and then I'm gonna hit the zero, G middle click, and bring my camera up. All right, and then we're gonna go to EV preview. All right, so this G middle click, this looks good, and we can just check the animation. Looks really nice. I'm just gonna go ahead and get another plane, bring it under, and then make it black. Just so we can have a nice uh, black background, or we can throw in, that'll, that'll be, actually look better. So now we can just throw that material in there. So now it's ready for lighting, so we're gonna move on to cycles. I'm gonna go to the beginning of the timeline, shift A, light, and get an A, Area light. I'm gonna hit G. I'm hitting G to move it around, bring it up. I'm gonna hit R twice. We're gonna go from a square to a disc, scale it up and give it a power of 1500, and then bring that spread in till we get kind of a vignette. And you can hit F3 and type in render region. We're gonna do a uh, render region here, so we can just focus on this. So now you can see we're getting kind of a vignette here in the camera icon. We're gonna go here to color management and give it high contrast. Shift A and get one more area light. We're gonna bring it up, scale it. And this one is gonna help fill out some of those shadows if you don't like how dark they are. So you can bring that power up, see how it kind of smooth, you know, evens it out. That's too much though. I want, you know, considerable contrast, but still make it look nice. All right, what we're gonna do now is go over here to the camera icon. We're almost done. I'm gonna click and drag. Light bounces to one, caustics here. And then I'm gonna keep my max samples at 300 and we're gonna render an image. All right, so that took me three seconds to render. We're gonna go here to the uh, compositing tab. I'm gonna click use nodes, shift A. We're gonna get a viewer, plug that here, hold down shift and right click, and that's gonna make sure everything goes into the animation. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a quick color grade. So we're just gonna make this fit, and we're gonna get RGB curves. This is gonna allow us to do a little bit of coloring. So on the red, Bring up on the red a little bit. Really, it's just bringing up those mid-tones. And then on the blue, bring it down a little bit. And that's going to give you this really nice warm effect. So if I hit M, now you don't have to like it. If you don't like it, you can certainly do whatever you think looks great. But I think this looks awesome. And that is... The tutorial. Let me show you how to render this and we'll be on our way. So I'm going to go ahead. I would strongly recommend using a PNG sequence with this because it cycles and maybe have a crash. You won't lose anything. Uh, so go ahead here in the printer icon, pick your resolution. We already kind of picked it here. Go ahead and create a new folder. Select that folder. Keep it at PNG. Render, render animation. But if you just want Blender to give you an MP4 file, no compiling, just run and done. We're gonna go here from PNG to FFmpeg video, encoding to MP4, sorry, where are we at? Encoding to MP4 and then medium quality to perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and when you're done, you're gonna have this animation um, in your own style, whatever you did, uh, but that is the tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out real-time materials that really helps support the channel and all that fun stuff. And those of you guys on Patreon, you'll be getting this project file. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.